Happy Valentine's Day, or Happy Single Awareness Day, or Happy Corporate Made-Up Holiday to Sell More Candy in February. Either way, Valentine's Day sure makes our pancreases work hard. Of course, that's if the pancreas is functioning normally. But we know that's not always the case. In the last sketch, we covered the anti-diabetic agents that boost endogenous insulin by stimulating pancreatic beta cells. But in this sketch, we're going to give the pancreas a break and focus on anti-diabetic agents that lower glucose levels in the body without changing how insulin is handled, by instead changing the way glucose is produced, absorbed, or uptaken. So, welcome inside, and we'll get started. Hmm. Inside. That reminds me that since we're not affecting insulin, we'll still need to have insulin around. Insulin that's made inside the body, or endogenous insulin. Taking this one step further, needing endogenous insulin around means we're mostly only talking about type 2 diabetes here, as evidenced by the second grade on the board, with one important exception that we'll get into later. First up is metformin, the classic type 2 diabetes drug. Let this metaphor remind you that this table is going to embody all that is metformin. Metformin is an oral agent used to decrease serum glucose by a few poorly understood mechanisms, mostly through modulating the effects of enzymes. Metformin decreases hepatic glucose production, decreases intestinal glucose absorption, and increases peripheral glucose uptake and utilization. Metformin suppresses gluconeogenesis in the liver by inhibiting mitochondrial glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, or MGPD, the enzyme responsible for getting molecules into the gluconeogenesis pathway. Let this bite out of a mitochondrial candy remind you of metformin's ability to inhibit mitochondrial enzymes. Gluconeogenesis coming to a halt is depicted by her teacher here, putting a hold on consumption of candy from the liver-shaped bag. Metformin also activates another enzyme, called AMPK, which also contributes to the reduction in hepatic glucose production. See the AMPK label? Again, the main theme here is that metformin works by modulating the function of enzymes. Besides suppressing gluconeogenesis, metformin also increases the uptake of glucose in peripheral tissues like skeletal muscle and the liver in response to insulin. Put another way, it reduces insulin resistance. The word inside should remind you of endogenous insulin, and there's plenty of candy being put inside that mailbox, just like metformin helps to pull glucose out of the serum and into cells. Think of it as increasing your body's sensitivity to the insulin you're already making. Unless there are clear contraindications, metformin reigns at the top for initial medication in type 2 diabetes. Just like this kid reigns at the top of the glass. He's the student of the month, like metformin is the drug of choice. It lowers hemoglobin A1c well and works well in combinations, too, if it's not enough on its own. Importantly, metformin does not cause hypoglycemia alone, giving it an advantage over insulin and the oral sulfonylurea agents from the previous sketch. This will be the case for most of the drugs covered in this sketch, but one, as we'll show later, will cause hypoglycemia, so we'll cover that when we get to it. Metformin also promotes modest weight reduction, or at least stabilization, which can be helpful in patients who are overweight or obese. Let's move on to metformin's adverse effects next. Not surprisingly, when you inhibit hepatic gluconeogenesis, lactate is prevented from entering into the gluconeogenesis pathways, causing it to build up in the serum, which can lead to lactic acidosis. So, we've got this spilled and spoiled milk as our recurring lactic acid symbol. The incidence of this is very, very low, but it's often fatal, so metformin carries a black box warning. Most often, this occurs when contraindications have been ignored. Metformin is contraindicated in patients with conditions that predispose them for developing lactic acidosis, including renal failure, heart failure, respiratory failure, liver failure, and significant systemic illnesses like sepsis or shock. Metformin is renally cleared, so dose adjustment is required in renal impairment to prevent that increased risk of lactic acidosis. And since IV contrast used in radiology studies can affect the kidney and prevent clearance of metformin, causing an increased risk of lactic acidosis, metformin should be held at the time of IV contrast administration and for around 48 hours following, for which we've brought in our classic symbol for contrast, the yin-yang sign. Similarly, metformin is withheld at the time of major surgery. 
Much more common than lactic acidosis are metformin's GI side effects, which include anorexia, nausea and vomiting, and even diarrhea. Wow! Looks like someone's trying to discredit the number one student. Who put that in there? Another important adverse effect to be aware of is that metformin can prevent absorption of B12, also called cobalamin. Clinically speaking, this rarely causes symptoms or anemia, but it is often tested, so it's best to know it. 